and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be going through the newly published Allure Best of Beauty 2020 list. So if you're interested in seeing me test out and play with, share my thoughts on a ton of Allure's 2020 Best in Beauty makeup list, then just keep on watching. The first product that we have to try out today is from the Steals category of the article. This is in like the drugstore Steals section, not in a specific category, if that makes sense. Um, I've been wanting to try this. I saw these at the drugstore a few months ago and I've been very curious and then I saw it on this list and I thought, perfect, we will use this as our primer or skin prep. So this is the Garnier Skin Active Glow Boost Fresh Mix Sheet Mask um, and this one specifically is supposed to add a glow boost to the skin. This is the exact one that was mentioned in the article. There is also a hydrating one. So we are going to head over to my bathroom now and put this on let it sink into the skin, and then we will get into testing out the rest of the makeup. So it says the sheet mask allows you to mix your own mask for a powerful boost of brightness and hydration whenever you need it. Our serum with 95% natural ingredients, including vitamin C, is freshly contained until you burst the chamber. Oh, did you guys hear that? Okay, the chamber has burst. We are saturating our mask. Can you guys see that? Okay, so I'm just gonna fold down the serum part to make sure everything is infused in the mask portion. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I thought it would be really messy, but I like that it's all in there. Open packet and apply mask to face. Remove after 15 minutes and pat excess serum. So from this point, it's just a regular sheet mask. Cool, so the mask is all on. I'm gonna let it sink in, absorb into the skin. It feels really, really nice. Typically with uh, sheet masks like this, I like to leave them on like half an hour or until they've like really dried the products fully absorbed into my skin. But I do have other things to do today and it has been the 15 minutes, which is the recommended application time. And I just want to get going with the makeup. So we are going to peel this off and see how my skin feels and rub in the excess product. I'm so pale that you can barely tell that I'm wearing a sheet mask. Okay, it is definitely still quite wet, but that's okay. I left it on how long it said to. So I'm just going to rub in the excess. It feels really, really nice. It does dry down very tacky, which is really good for makeup application. And now we are going to move on to foundation. So there are three foundations on the list. It is broken up into light coverage, medium coverage, and full coverage, which I love. And I happen to have the light coverage option. So good thing my skin isn't being complete shit. It's just semi shit right now. Um, so we're going light coverage. I have the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. This retails for $39. I'm assuming that's American. And mine is in Y218. Um, for the medium coverage option, the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. I've heard really good things about that. And for full coverage, it's the Lancome Tint Idol Foundation Stick. That surprised me. I haven't really heard anything about that foundation, to be honest. But we are going to go in with the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. As I said, mine is in Y218. This foundation is made to brighten, smooth, firm, hydrate, and even out skin, so exciting stuff. I have my Sephora collection sponge. We are going to apply it with that. And even though this is a light coverage foundation, I'm not really a light coverage type of girl. So I'll probably just build it up a little bit more than the average person would with a foundation like this. That's my preference. And I like to be flawless. Here is how two layers of the foundation is looking on my skin. I think it looks really, really nice. Feels very lightweight, very skin-like. It's very much a liquidy, runny formula. But I think that looks really pretty. I can see why it made the list. I have tried it before, but I just really don't remember my thoughts. The concealers on the list I don't have. I think that's one of the only categories. I think concealer and brows are the only ones that I don't have. So I'm going to hop off camera quickly and do my concealer. 
but the concealers that are listed are the Armani Beauty Luminous Silk Concealer. That was a new release this year. I've heard really good things about it. And then the Sephora Collection Acne Treatment Salicylic Acid Concealer. Newer release as well. I've heard good things. I've sold it a bunch at Sephora and people seem to enjoy it, but I haven't personally tried it. I am now all concealed and super, super pale. So we are going to go in with a bunch of cream products from the list to add color and dimension. So we have three cream products, cream liquids to go in with. I think this has been a huge, huge trend of 2020. Cream products in general, cream everything, dewy everything has been kind of the theme of 2020. So the dewy bronzer that won on the list is the Nude Sticks Nudies Bronze in Bondi Bay, which I do have. I have already owned this, loved it in my collection. So you get the little brush. I never use that. Little cream contour, cream bronzer. Uh, Nude Sticks cream products in general are just quite great. And they are also a Toronto Canadian based brand, which we love. Super easy to blend and work with and the color is really, really nice. So, and then I'm going to set with powder once we are done all of the cream and liquid steps. I love how that bronzer looks on the skin. It's just so pretty and natural and subtle. I will set it with a powder bronzer from the list in a second, but we are going to jump into cream highlight finish all the creams and then we will go into powder. So there's lots of highlighter on the list. Um, there's a highlighter stick from CoverGirl, the Clean Fresh Cooling Glow Stick. I tried to pick that up, couldn't find it anywhere. The highlighter that won for cream is the Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter, which I do have in Kitten, so we'll, we will be using that today. There's also a liquid highlighter, the Becca Cosmetics Ignite Liquefied Highlighter. And then there is a powder highlighter, the Milani Baked Highlighter. Again, couldn't find that. Um, and then there's a highlighter palette from Beauty Bakery, the Milk and Honey Highlighter Palette. So tons of highlighter options. As I said, I have the Stila Heaven's Hue in Kitten. This is a tad deep for me, but it's what we have. I tried to pick up one of the others just to layer, but couldn't find any of them. So we're just going to go in with this one today. I don't reach for it too often, to be honest, just because it is a slight bit too dark for me. You can see there it is a little bit deep. I'll swatch it on the back of my hand for you. But the actual consistency and the way it looks on the skin is really, really gorgeous. You can see it there, but we'll just go in with a little bit right now. It is super pretty. If it was just a touch lighter, it would be perfect, but it is a little bit deep for me. But the formula itself is really, really unique and very pretty. Now we are going to move on to blush. So this one surprised me to say the least. I do have one of the products mentioned, but it's one that I really don't like. So let's get into it. The powder blush that is on here is the Clarins Blush in Jolie. Um, and then the blush cream option is the Maybelline Cheek Heat Gel Cream Blush. So um, I have a full video review on these. It is actually the most popular video on my channel. I really don't like these. I didn't like them in the video and I've come to very much dislike them since using them. It's on the list. We're going to use it. Um, this is the only product on the list that I actually disagree with, which is pretty good considering I try a lot of products. I work at Sephora. I'm obsessed with YouTube. I know a decent amount about people's, the general public's, and my opinion on things. And my opinion and the general consensus from what I can tell is that people don't like these. They've been on sale because people don't like them, I would assume. My issue with this product is that I don't find it buildable, which it is supposed to be. I don't find it um, smooth on the skin. It's a little bit patchy. That's kind of my two cents on this. I'm just putting some on the back of my hand and I'm going to blend it right directly onto my cheeks with my finger. Takes a lot of product to build this up and I like a more intense blush for sure. I'm a big blush person. Putting more product on the back of my hand and we still have barely any pigment for what I like at least. Okay, that is where I'm going to leave that. The color payoff is just so slight. They're too sheer. They're kind of patchy and it's just not worth it in my opinion. It's not a terrible product, but there's so many better cream products out there. So I just 
Not a big fan, don't know why that blush made the list when there's so many better cream blushes out there. Base powder, we are trying a new product from the list. There are two different powder powders awarded on the list. So we have a pressed powder, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder um, in Translucent. I picked this up yesterday for the purposes of this video. I had never tried it. This packaging is super cute. I never purchased anything from the CoverGirl Clean Fresh line actually. Um, it just didn't interest me, but this powder has amazing reviews. I've been hearing good things about it aside from this And then I saw it on the list and I was like, okay I need to try it out in this video So we picked up that and then the loose powder that is awarded is the Fenty Pro Filter Retouch Setting Powder Which I haven't tried but I've heard good things about that as well So I'm just going to go in and set my face lightly with this translucent powder from CoverGirl Typically I do not like pressed translucent powders I can't really think of any that I enjoy or use or have in my collection um, I've definitely tried, oh, it looks nice under my eyes. I've definitely tried translucent pressed powders in the past. Ooh, that did really brighten. Um, but I've never liked them, so I've always decluttered them or gone through them and not repurchased. Wow, that actually looks really, really nice and smooth on the skin. Like, super blurring, too. I feel like it does give a definite white cast, though. Like, even in the viewfinder and in person, I can tell where I've applied it already, which I don't love. So I'll have to keep testing it out, but I really do like how smoothing and blurred the under eye looks especially so maybe with a using it like with a beauty sponge pressing it and then going in with a face powder might be how I would prefer to use it um but I really like the finish and how it looks on the skin I just don't love how you can tell exactly where I put it if you know what I mean. Now that we are all set in place, it's time to go in with a powder bronzer. So the one on the Allure 2020 list is the Benefit Hula Bronzer. This was actually one of the first high-end makeup purchases I ever made, and I have repurchased it ever since. So I've repurchased these for probably the past 10 or so years, which is crazy. Um, I just have a mini right now, but I absolutely love this bronzer, so I totally understand why it's on the list. And this combined with the Nude Sticks um, cream bronzer is such a lovely combination because they are both very nice and warm, but not too warm, not orange warm, especially for someone as fair as me. Um, they're just both really nice bronzers, so I can totally understand why they made the list. Here's how the skin is looking now. I really like how that bronzer warms up the overall complexion and adds depth and dimension and some more color. So I am going to quickly go off camera and do my main brow pomade routine. Um, and then I will come back to set the brows with a brow gel that's on the best of beauty list. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly fill in my brows. So the Allure list has so many options for brows, so many awarded categories for brows. But we are going to be using the uh, product awarded for the clear gel category. This is the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow Clear Setting Gel. I was in need of a new clear brow gel anyway, so we are going to go ahead and set the brows in place. I love using a clear brow gel in order to brush the hairs upwards a little bit. I also like a brow gel to just generally set the brows in place, kind of like hairspray. For the brows. Ooh, this is a really liquidy gel, probably though just because it's brand new. Okay, I really like how that looks. I really, really like how that's set in place. We will let it dry down and see how intense my brows stay. There's so many categories for eyeshadow, so many options, so I'm just going to not go through all of them because there's honestly so many options, but I am going to use two of the products listed in the awards. The eyeshadow liquid that's listed is the Kosas 10 Seconds Eyeshadow. I have the copper one. I actually really, really love this product. It's really good. No one talks about it. This is in the shade Copper Halo, so I have that. And then another shadow product that was listed is the e.l.f. Uh, little Glitter Pops. This is in Copper Pop. This is in the Splurges category at the bottom, not listed with the Eyes category. And I should say, I've used the Kosas one, love it, have used it 
and had it in my collection for a while. And then the e.l.f. one is totally new to me. I picked this up just for the video. I've heard good things. I'm not really a glitter shadow type girl, but I like it every once in a while. And these ones seem really nice and cheap. I'm going to start off with the Kosas shadow. I don't use anything to like prep my eyes when I use these. And I just go in directly with the brush in the center of my lid and then blend outwards with a brush. That's the best way that I found to use them. Blend that in. I usually do this pretty sloppily. Super, super easy to use. That's why this is called like the 10 second eyeshadow because it's so freaking easy to use. You can totally blend it with your finger. I just find a brush easier. Uh, especially with my lash extensions. Now I'm going to add the e.l.f. glitter shadow on top. I don't know how this is going to go. I want to do a pretty sheer layer, so I am going to apply it to a brush and not go directly like I did with the Kosas because I want it to be a little bit more diffused. You could definitely do this more intense. You could apply it straight from the brush and do it with like a cut crease type look and it would look gorgeous. Very easy, achievable, sloppier eye look, but it's still glam and pretty. So I really do like that. I can see why both of those products are on the list for sure. In terms of black liner, there are two on the Allure list. They mention the MAC Black Track Pro Longwear Fluid Line. This is a favorite. It's like a gel pot really nice for lining the upper lash line. You can use it on the lower to smudge out, but I'm not going to use that today because of my lash extensions and I want to be more precise. So I'm going to be trying out a new product that the list mentions. This is the Maybelline Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner. Super, super skinny and small. I have been hearing good things about this lately and then I saw it on the list and was like, I need to try it. I need to pick it up. So it is a super, super fine tip there. If you can tell, it's like a micro tip almost. It looks really nice and black, so I'm going to do a small line. I think that's all I'm going to do, like literally just where my lashes are, a super thin line. Super black, super easy. I like how small the actual applicator is as well because it's really easy to hold. I totally understand why this liner is called the Hyper Easy. That was incredibly incredibly easy um i got a nice thin line just nice definition on the upper lash line super black very pigmented incredibly easy to work with understand why that one's on the list now we are going to move on to mascara and i am only going to do the lower lash line because of my lash extensions so there's a bunch of winners for mascara for volumizing mascara we have the anastasia lash brag i have that i will be using that today it is one of my favorite mascaras ever ever and then for mascara primer the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir primer so I do have the mascara primer for Marc Jacobs I don't think it's necessary to prime your lower lashes at all it is an expensive product and I don't see a point in priming bottom lashes so I won't be using it today I'll just be using the ABH lash brag which I really love but I totally understand why this one I've tried a bunch of lash primers and this is my absolute favorite so Love that. Let's go in with the ABH Lash Brag. This is just in black. More ideal for the upper lashes in my opinion, but we are going to try it on the lowers today and see what we think. Ooh, that looks really pretty. Whoa, those are some voluminous lower lashes. That looks really nice, actually. We are almost done. Now all we have left is lips. There are so many products listed for lips. There's a lipstick for like every shade, lip masks, everything. So I'm just going to tell you the three lip products that I'm going to be using. So the lip liner that is on the list that I will be using is the NYX Professional Makeup Slim Lip Pencil. This is their traditional wooden pencil liner, not the retractable easy glide on liner i definitely prefer that formula but this is the original like traditional formula and i have mine in the shade peekaboo neutral that is what it looks like there so it's like a nice neutral nude pink so i'm just gonna go ahead and overline with this i do really really like this color um, the formula is just not my favorite. I like the slide on glide on more because it's creamier, more pigmented, easier to work with, but this color is amazing and the formula is 
pretty comparable to the MAC wooden pencil liners. Here's how the liner looks just on its own. I actually really like that shade, especially with the eye look. I think it's very fall nude appropriate, warm tone nude, but I do have a lip crayon to put on top and then a gloss as well. So the lip crayon that I have is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon. Um, I tried picking up a shade that looked similar to the one in the image in the article and the shade that I got is Stay Exceptional. This is definitely more of a classic pink, more of a cool toned pink than the liner, but I thought the shade was really pretty and I've heard really good things about this crayon formula. I love a chubby pencil like this. It's a little bit darker than I thought it was going to be, especially with the liner. Ooh, I really, really like how that looks. Very fall appropriate, a little bit grungy, like a deep mid-toned mauve, I would say. Super, super pretty. I love the smell of it too. It smells like vanilla. Love that. Definitely understand why that would be on the list. And then the last product that we have to try is in the steals category at the bottom, so it's not with the specific makeup categories. Um, this is the Shine 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 Lip Gloss from Essence, specifically the clear one. I went to two different stores, tried to get that shade, couldn't find it, it was sold out, so I picked up the shade Think Pink, which is like a really nice bright pink. Not sure how this is going to go with the lip we have on. But we will make it work. Essence lip products in general are amazing. So I'm excited to have this in my collection. Quite pigmented. The finish that these glosses give are so stunning. I know why they're called the shine 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 gloss. They just give the juiciest most wet shiny look to the lips and I love it. And with that that concludes my testing best of beauty 2020 allure list products. Um, I honestly really enjoy every single thing that I tried today and I highly recommend all of the products that I had previously owned in my collection. The only exception to that as I had as I had, as I had anticipated are the Maybelline Cheek Heat Cream Blushes. I don't think they're worth it and I don't understand how they made the list to be honest, but everything else I agree with. Definitely read the best of 2020 list from Allure. Let me know what you think, what would be like your number one product on there. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. It really helps me out and as well, please be sure to like this video if you liked it and want to see videos similar to this. With that, that is everything that I have for you guys today. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.